Now there's another cause that's very common in the U.S. today, and that's alcohol consumption. Alcohol is a huge cause or contributing factor of yeast overgrowth for several different reasons. One, too much alcohol, those people, people that go out and just get hammered, right, get drunk. Alcohol is an immunosuppressant, so one of the ways it works is through immunosuppression. Another way that it works is through B vitamin loss, so it actually causes you to lose B vitamins, which can affect your ability to produce certain very beneficial compounds that help your uh, that help your microbiome overcome yeast. So alcohol, again, several different mechanisms here. They feed the alcohol can feed the yeast. Alcohol can suppress the immune system. Alcohol can cause vitamin deficiencies that that create immune problems that create immune system dysfunction. So Again, alcohol is a very, very big reason. One of the reasons why I don't, anybody who comes to see me as a client, alcohol's got to go. It's got to be out of the diet. A lot of people say, what about that glass of wine at night? Yeah, that glass of wine, that one glass of wine at night can contribute to a massive, persistent yeast overgrowth, even one glass. So you've got to keep that in mind because, you know, a lot of people justify that one glass because the cardiologist has said, hey, don't worry about it. Now, one of the other things, we got number six here, and that is high carbohydrate diets, which I've mentioned up here already. So we'll put a little six in front of that because we're running out of room. So high carbohydrate diets, and so aside from grain, what's high carbohydrate? We got things like potato and yucca and arrowroot and plantain. Those are things that people are, those are grain free that it's, people gravitate toward that can be very high carbohydrate that can create a, or a feeding effect with yeast. But then there's also other high carbohydrates. Um, you know, one of the things that can feed yeast is dairy. And if we put dairy kind of under this classification, dairy for more than just this reason of being a high carbohydrate, dairy can also be contaminated with mold, which is not uncommon. But dairy we'd add to this group. We could put potato in this group. And again, um, we've got things like cassava, tapioca, um, any other type of heavy, heavy fruit consumption, especially dried fruit. Um, for most people, it's not fruit that stopped or that, that totally feeds us because fruit can be good for you, but most people either overconsume fruit or they overconsume dried fruit in a big way. So like if you eat a box of raisins, for example, that's like eating, you know, if undried, right? When you dry them, it's like this big, but when they're undried, it's like this big. So you're eating concentrated sugar, basically when you're eating a lot of dried fruit. And if that's a staple in your diet, trail mix and things of that nature, that can really, really contribute to feeding uh, uh, yeast populations and creating an overgrowth. So these things, very, very common that are generally considered grain-free, generally considered healthy, that can contribute to yeast overgrowth. And if we add a number seven down here, and this one's the obvious one, everybody should understand this one pretty easy, and that's sugar, particularly processed sugar. Processed sugar, you know, I'm talking about a lot of products that contain um, added sugars. We're not talking about natural fruit sugar that is in a piece of fruit that you might eat as much as we're talking about a, a jam or a jelly per se that's that's sweetened with concentrated apple juice. So you might see on the label apple juice concentrate or grape juice concentrate. That's pure sugar and that we're going to put under the processed sugar category. But this could be cane sugar, this could be corn sugar, this could be beet sugar. In many cases this can be maple. Maple, too much maple. A lot of people use maple as a natural healthy sugar alternative but too much can also feed a yeast overgrowth. So we got to have some concern and be aware that that's the case as well. So any of your, your sweetened foods, and I'm not talking about uh, like things like stevia. Stevia is one of those natural sweeteners that will not feed a yeast overgrowth. It's not going to contribute to that. Actually, stevia is a prebiotic. It actually helps to feed the microbiome. It actually helps to feed good bacteria. So not so much going to trigger that. So if you've got that sweet tooth, you know, if you tolerate stevia, not everyone does, that, that's a better option. Sugar alcohol is a better option particularly birch wood. So when we're talking about sugar al alcohol, primarily xylitol that, that is derived from birch wood is probably your best choice. There certainly are other sugar alcohols, but you have to be careful with many of them because they can be derived from corn. And those are ones that I absolutely do not recommend, especially if you are a gluten sensitive individual. So we'll stop at seven. We could keep going all night, but I want to take some time to get your questions. But these are seven very predominant reasons, right? What causes yeast overgrowth. So if we look at this and we ask ourselves, 
ourselves the harder questions. What am I doing that's contributing to this possibility? Now we have at least a list of seven things that we can start adjusting and changing. Now, I want to add one bonus item in here today because I think it's very important. It's a hot topic of late and uh, we'll, we'll draw it in a different color here. There's some new studies that are coming out on electromagnetic frequency, EMF, radiation, actually helping propagate yeast. Um, we see this more, not so much in humans, like there's not a study that I've been privy to that I've read yet that shows that if you have a yeast overgrowth inside of you, that exposing yourself to EMF will help that yeast grow inside of you. But we have seen this in water damaged buildings where EMF actually propagates mold growth where mold is growing. So there, there's some research now that's showing that high levels of EMF actually helps yeast to grow stronger. So you need to be aware of that or cautious of that if you've already done these other seven things and you know and you are you know having getting ready to have a 5G cell tower put next door to you or if you have your phone glued to your face or if you have you know heavy exposure to Wi-Fi on a regular basis or if you've got a smart meter in your home, you know, there are a number of different ways people can be exposed to Wi-Fi. And if, again, it, this is more of an issue where if you're struggling with this chronic problem and you're already doing these things, this may be something that you want to look into and get addressed. Hey, and if you missed the earlier part of this series, click right here so you can go back and get caught up. The information there might be critical to helping you on your path to better health. And as always, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe for updates below. Have a great day.